Good morning. It's another beautiful day in paradise. And today we are talking about something that we always talk about every single Monday, which is how do early stage founders grow? Now, we're going to do some interesting stuff today. I am going to send my phenomenal head of Indian market and just general genius. I'm going to shoot him over the link by email so that Ash can invite lots of people in on this restream. And so if you'd like to come in, Ash will, there we go. Ash will facilitate that and make sure that he can let folks know about it. Ash will also let me know any questions are coming through. As all of you know, we're kind of trying to work our way through Restream. I've used, I've used Zoom, Google Hangouts for years. And now I'm in this place where Restream is this great, great, great tool that we can use to go to market. And um, now, Ash, you got this going through LinkedIn. You've got this going through Facebook. You've got this going through a number of other a number of other areas as well. So as people are feeding back and they're coming in with chat and with comments, please loop them back in here so we can we can take them from here. Today I want to talk about domain expertise, and I want to layer it on really thick. And I want to talk about within domain expertise. I want to talk about how you present yourself, how you come across, how other people see you, what they think of what you're saying. Because it's like, it's so important and so interesting what's happening in the world today. And so many founders believe that either their product does not get investment and somebody else's product does get investment and, and are, it's a different founder, it comes from a different place. <clears throat> but it's not just about what I usually say, which is, hey, this founder went to a nice school, so they get all the money. This founder did not, so they don't. There is a part of that, but it is not all of it. A lot of it is about you and about how you are portraying yourself. And when you're doing that, that comes down to a number of different areas. First of all, it is how you communicate. People will be affected either in a positive or negative way in their belief of what you are capable of doing based on the communication that you have. And I'm going to talk a little bit about communication today. It's one of the few areas I am, have a little bit of skill on, so I'm going to share that with you. The second area is what people hear about you, and that is the domain expertise that you build. And if we're lucky, Ash is going to facilitate Dustin to be able to come in, and Dustin's going to have a little chat about that as well and then the third part of it is how you present your project itself okay so i want to go through all three today i think it'll be hugely valuable to you because i just see entrepreneurs flailing around every single day i'll reach out to this investor i'll reach out to this investor hopefully this investor will will do something hopefully i'll get some money over here and it doesn't work like that this is a game of emotion and it is a game of trust and it is a game of belief Good to see you in there, Bradley. How are you, buddy? I like it. You're in. Hey, did you, if you, by the way, if you would you like to join and see, so you got some stuff to say? Okay, hang on, hang on, hold on a second here. I got to work out how the hell to get you in. Dingity ding. <laughs> there we there go. We How's that? Perfect. Perfect. I, I love it, Brad. Matt, Matt, I just brought my first person up on restream. This is crazy. I don't know. I feel like it's all been done now. It's been achieved. I got nothing else to say. <laughs> it's good to see you. Hey, I got these two topics to talk about. What would you like to add? To this morning is is your morning. It's everybody's morning. What are the things that you would most like to get out of this? For for me, um, I, I honestly, I'm I'm just soaking in right now. Okay, exactly. here's what I'm going to do. I'll leave you here. As you have anything you want to bring up, I'm going to run through these three areas. I'm going to run through communication, which I just think is so, it's so everything. I'm going to run through then how you create the domain expertise. And then we're going to talk about like the presentation, where it comes from. I'll leave you down here. And if you want to jump in, just let me know. I like it. Okay, good stuff. You see, it works. I like this restream thing. That was actually quite good. It was empowering. Um, okay, so. 
Um, I, I want to create context before we jump. I jump into communication and I jump into these. Let me create a little bit of context first. And my context is venture lives here. Venture hasn't had a um, an exit other than Reddit, which was like so powerful. And then it wasn't right. Um, and then a couple of, I oh, oh, can't include Donald Trump. I don't think that really counts. That's back because it's Donald Trump. But like everybody else, it was like uh, either no IPOs, some IPOs, lousy IPOs or acquisitions that didn't really happen this year. Right. So everybody in the venture space is afraid and they are scared for their money. And the only thing that they want to hear is how their money is going to be returned to them with some type of benefit. Now we have this world over here. And this world over here is the crypto world, the token world, and the decentralized world. This world is on fire. Like if you told an investor in crypto today that you are going to get them a two times return, they would laugh in your face. They would throw it away. They'd be like, we're expecting way more than that. I was on with an investor this morning I said, look, we understand how this game works. It is a game of storytelling and it is a game of narrative. And if the narrative is correct, then your coin over the thousands of other coins out there is going to get a 20, 30 times rise. And you can just look at multiple coins in doing that. And so why is this world on fire, making huge returns, getting great, great um, paybacks and everybody really excited about it with more and more investors in the space every second. And this world over here is like dead as a doorknob. And it's because of those three areas, right? If there's no belief and trust that sits in behind it, it's very hard to push people. Now, don't worry if you're, if look, if you're an early stage starting up and you're thinking, Brian, we're not a token and we're not an area. Don't worry. This is an analogy. There are plenty of venture backable companies that are breaking through right now. I literally just finished a call with one of our companies that's raising a serious A that just got a term sheet for $6 million. But they need to think like the people in crypto and how they are right now. Because right now there is belief, there is trust, and there is a very direct road to being able to get returns on money. While in early stage venture, there's not. In early stage venture, people are still following the same formula that they followed two years ago. And two years ago, it worked fine. Talk about a story, make the story really good, explain why the product is really important, explain how that's going to really help your customer, how the customer needs it. Investors don't care about any of that stuff anymore. What they want to know is, I worked really hard for my money. That money might get lost, as all the money that got lost that I invested in the last year or so. How are you going to protect my money? Because I have choices. And my choices are I could throw it in the stock exchange. I could throw it in crypto if I understood crypto. Right? I could throw it onto the bank. Shoot, that's like 5.5% you can get. As just a general average person, 5.5% you can get back on it. So if I'm going to put it in you, you have to tell me why. And I literally spent the hour before the previous half an hour on with one of our companies, rebuilding their entire deck and taking it away from very, very, very wordy story that goes through the entire problem, the solution, how they work through the solution to the market size. And we moved it immediately to slide two, the percentage increase that they had in revenue last year, the percentage expected increase in revenue that they are going to have this year. And then it moves on to, oh, and by the way, here is two sentences about what's really important about what we're building and then two sentences about where we're going in the future and then we immediately move into the execution of the team. So you need to build the trust and the belief that there is going to be a return on the investment for the investor before you start focusing on building the, the trust and the belief elsewhere. And like I said, there's, um, I'm sorry, before you start just going through the usual boring problem solution and everything else, your features don't matter to the investors as much as maybe they did two years ago. What really matters to the investors right now, now is, is the transformational impact that you're going to bring to your customer so massive that they can be pretty sure that the customer is going to make the first action that is required on your software site, um, SaaS platform, whatever it is that you have, 
and that they are then and that is what 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 i think of as like the um the uh, i actually call it not rather than product fit it's more like the lovable icp fit so the lovable ideal customer profile fit like do you have that and then are we relatively safe in the knowledge that you're going to be able to take it to the next level fairly sh fairly soon where we can add in that second part which is the repeatable loop that i spoke about last year like the thing that the customer will do that doesn't require you to keep on having to come back in again to keep them going again okay that's the transformative impact that i'm speaking to if the transformative impact is there we need to show on the very first slide that you have the roadmap to take this up to three hundred thousand dollars a month which is your series a remember all investors care about is you're getting. If you're a pre-seed or a seed company, the only thing they care about is you're getting to a um, wonderful. And they only care that, that you're going to get to that serious A round and you can make it to that stage, okay? And so three parts that are really going to help you. Part number one is your presentation skills. Now, whenever you're presenting there are three really important parts. And look, this may seem basic to people, but I promise you, nobody does this. It's not just that a small amount of people did it. I was at a, I was judging or helping or working with or, or helping people improve on a pitch event that they were doing. And I watched this and I was like, oh man, I was like, I, I know I really want to go through like the, the financial benefits of the company, but I can't get past the physical interaction that I'm having with the people. And so those three areas that you have to get right when you're doing your presentations is number one is the words. But the words are only like, here, here's the crazy thing. And some of you may know this, but the words are like six to 10% of the message, right? Uh, unless it's an affirmational message, right? Unless it's a, I went to the shops, okay. But if it's something like, I love you, then it's six to 10% because it could say, I love you, or it could be, I love you right? They're different things. They're totally different things. Like one is I love you, but it's not really, it's really, I hate you. Right. And then the other one is like, I really love you. It's six to 10%, right? When there's any ambiguity in the message whatsoever, six to 10%. So what are the other two aspects of it? It's the tone that you use and it's how you use gestures. If you use too many gestures and it's going on like this, then I lose you, right? Because I'm scattered and you're scattered and you don't know what to do. If I use too few gestures and my hands are like this, then you don't trust me. And this stuff seems really, really basic. But I swear to you, it is the absolute fundamental basis of the human emotion that you're building with the investor. You need to be aligned with them. I have a very good friend, and the, the final part is the tone, by the way. And I don't need to spend a lot of time on this because if I'm saying to you, like, the most important point, I've got you for a second, right? Now, next, I got to do something really good, but I've got you for a second because you're not going to be like, okay, Brian, I'll play, right? You've stopped your monotone. You've moved into a place of probably the only thing that you need to take into account right now, the only thing of the whole call, like you're like, okay, I'll play. You know, you did this, you did this, you didn't point at me, so I didn't feel like rude, but it was like, but if I was in Spain, I would be pointing at you. So you want to, these things are like, are the absolute base that you want to go for. And I would strongly suggest, I was fortunate enough to have, to be able to do a TEDx talk, which forced me to practice things that I wouldn't normally have looked at. And it was like the greatest thing I ever did. And so I would really strongly suggest practicing emotional resonance. I'm not saying practicing pitching. I'm saying practicing emotional resonance. And it is harder to have emotional resonance with 20 or 30 people in front of you. But if you have one person in front of you, it's very easy. Now, if you want to take that to like supersonic strength, and um, I personally love NLP, which is Neuro Linguistic Programming. Um, and NLP is like the stuff that, you know, your, your Tony Robbins and all those boys and girls used back in the day. And it's things like, well, if I'm here and if I see Bradley and, and, he, and he's not crossing his arms, but if he was crossing his arms, then I might decide to cross my arms for a minute just so I can then uncross my arms, which would mean I can have the control and I can try and, and I can try and do that. And so there are little things. You don't want to be silly with this because it starts to look very obvious 
when you take it to a stage, but work on the basis, things like matching, mirroring, getting into the same sync as the people that you're engaging with is like super important. It really is because they feel like you're there. And like, I'm sure you've had conversations where you're with somebody and their legs are crossed and they're up here and they're sitting back while you're like forward and you're really in the middle of something very intense and very good. And it just kind of feels rude to you. And the other person isn't being rude. They're just not congruent with the place that you're in right now. But that's actually a really good thing to realize because if you realize that, sometimes you can pull them out of it by actually moving back and then moving up or a subtle crossing of the legs or a subtle recrossing of the legs. But other times it just tells you the truth, right? It's just like, yeah, this isn't jiving. And that could mean that you can get to a place where you, and by the way, I can do a whole session on this. I think it's a really, really good session. I just wanted to do a little bit of, of overview. So at least you had something in there and I'll ask Ash, because I didn't jump into the dojo today, but I will ask Ash just to text me every couple of min minutes so he can let me know that we're, um, if anybody else has any questions, or, or even if there's any, um, just anything that you wanna, you wanna talk about on this, you might say, hey, actually, I have a problem with this presentation style. I actually met this lady on Friday night, and she said to me, whenever I present, and the fact that she used the word present is so indicative of what was going to come next. This is why I use the word emotional resonance. Emotional resonance is like awesome because emotional resonance is not me trying to impress Bradley. Emotional resonance is me saying, I want to be, I want to be in line with him. Like I'm, this is my time and his time and our time. And so I want to make sure that the things that are important to him are the things that are important to me and vice versa right? Because then I move into a different place. And so she said to me on Friday night, she's like, hey, every single time I present, I get these hard palpitations, like really, really, really bad. And I get really worried about, about all that stuff. And I said to her, it's like the craziest thing. The craziest thing is like, I, that used to happen to me years ago, um, but in a really bad way. And, and then I realized one day, I don't even know that I realized it, but I did a presentation one day where it wasn't a presentation where it was actually something really important that somebody else needed to know. And I wasn't worried at all because I was more worried about them taking on board the information. And it was like the craziest thing because up to that point, I had been given advice on so many different levels. Like, look at the look at the audience, look at the crowd, imagine they're all naked. None of that stuff worked. Like, it's okay. <laughs> it's like, first of all, it was weird, but like none of it really worked. And then, and, but then I got this thing and I was like, oh my God, I just did a presentation and I felt really great and, and the person was really, they were really congruent and they were really in line with what I was doing and they got it and they took it and I really helped them. And I realized that actually from that day, I would never ever do presentations that relied on what people thought of me. Like even today, the quality of what I do is of no importance to me. The quantity or the quality or the, or, or the basis of what you receive is the most important thing. And so I said that to her and she was like, oh my God, that's great. And then she was like a, um, a Bitcoin freak. And so she then, I was then asking her about what she did. And then she went in and her arms were going and her tone was going and she was explaining how it worked. And it was like one of the most beautiful things because I was enthralled by what she was saying. I found it like, like genuinely one of the most interesting conversations that I had had in, in I can't even tell you how long. And then so then I had to go and it was kind of a shame. And so the moment that she forgot about the fact that she was presenting and the moment she got into a moment where she, like if I'm talking about Expert Dojo and I'm talking to a potential limited partner about Expert Dojo, I am not presenting for money as a limited partner. I want them to understand what I believe is fundamentally broken in entrepreneurship so that they understand me and so that they can maybe be part of the solution or maybe not be part of the solution, but understand what's important to me so that I can be aligned in a conversation, which is, which is, it should be important to both of us. Right. And then what happens is this, the people who are always going to be, no, the people who weren't a part of it, they're gone. Like, but I am now aligned with what I'm going after. Now this does not take away from what I was saying earlier on about the fact that, Hey, I go hardcore on the money. I'm real clear with people. 
our model, I believe, is going to make him way more money than any other VC out there, period. Right. But that is not exclusionary to the fact that we have found a unique insight. If anybody wants to know about unique insights, just look up what Kosla talked about on unique insights. Like it's pretty spectacular. Um, and he speaks about like all of the great unicorns have got like incredible insights that they bring out. Um, and so I always want to talk about that and bring that thing in there as well. So you get that. That's like a very basic thing on the presentations, but it's really important. Like I've touched all of the points. You want to make sure that your words are taken with the measurement of the context of what's actually there. An investor does not know like how good or bad or right or wrong or correct or incorrect. So there is no context. So when you're using words, you want to make sure those words are reinforced by the tone that you're using, by the way that you're moving around as you're standing, that you're not standing in one spot on the floor. You're not reading like some, I'll get probably one in every 20 people who do pictures will read stuff. You can't read things because what that tells people is you don't know. You can put clues in your presentation slides, secretly hidden clues that nobody else knows that they're secretly hidden, but you, like you can do that, but you can't read stuff because again, that falls into the same thing. And then being congruent, making sure that you're aligned with the people. Um, I'll give you my, my um, uh, what's my favorite book? I haven't read this in a long time, but I really like it. The Art, I think it's The Art of Pitching, Oren Claff. Maybe look up Oren Claff. Ash, I want to make sure you're alive out there. But if you want to share with people that Oren Claff, what he did, um, if not, I'll find it by the end of, of where we are. But it's an incredible book because it speaks to exactly what I'm talking about here. It talks about like how not to be the person that's on the wrong end of the toxic relationship. You're on the right hand. Okay, second thing I want to speak about here is building your domain expertise. And how do you build that domain expertise so that you're in a position? Okay, good man. Ash is there. I like it, Ash. Let me know if there's any questions, okay, or anybody's got anything that they want to know or Dustin wants to jump in or anything else. Um, so, okay, second point is domain expertise. And by the way, I promise you this thing today, like if you follow this three-step process, like you will raise money as long as your product's okay and you can show that there's like a good return for investors, I promise you, you'll raise money. There's so many wealthy people out in the world. They actually, they say that there is going to be more Bitcoin millionaires than anything else within 18, within an 18 month period. Um, that is not a, a suggestion to buy Bitcoin. I suppose they mean coins rather than Bitcoin, right? But what it's saying is that not only do we have the millions and millions and millions and millions of, of, of millionaires that we have out there, <clears throat> hundreds of millions, but we're going to have a heck of a lot more that are all coming from this new space that was a new wealth generation source that had never been there before. So because of that, there is plenty of money. There are investors. If you're spending enough time outreaching, then by having this in place, then you're in a really good place to, to be able to do that too. Ooh, somebody else is joining. How nice. Okay, good. And then so... Um, the domain expertise is really important, though, because no matter how nice you are or what you say or, or, or what I do in my presentation, and I get up on the screen and I'm like, here's my deck, and there's 50 people in the audience, and I walk around the floor like I'm the boss and I own the floor. Like, even if I do all that, nobody's ever, ever, ever heard of me. Then, like, how believable is it really? Again, 2020, 2022, yeah, like that's cool because there's loads of money around. There's loads of entrepreneurs breaking through. Why the hell not? I got a cool technology. Like it's really good, but we're not in that world anymore. We're now in 2024 and 2024 sucks as a market for people to believe and to trust, which means you have to build your domain expertise. And I, want, I love giving like lots of examples of lots of entrepreneurs who are doing like really good stuff. Um, and I met this amazing lady yesterday from the Breshniverse, and she got investment from Paris Hilton, and she's got investment from Randy Zuckerberg, um, and she was a solo female founder out of Pakistan. 
Amazing story, right? And she was out of Pakistan. How many unicorns are there in Pakistan? I don't even know if there is one. Maybe there's one, right? But it doesn't even count if there's only one in the country that size, right? And so she's a female founder, which is like five gazillion times harder than being a female founder in the United States. And she decides that gaming is the best form of education. So she starts creating these hyper local games, which are just very, very easy to make. And she built out a code so they could make it like Roblox, but just better and just specifically for gaming. And so the first gaming game that she did was a game that promoted awareness around menstrual activity for young girls, right? Which over there is really important because nobody speaks about it. And she got death threats and all kinds of stuff. And so she got her ass out and she started building it and creating it because she realized she was doing some good. And then she started outreaching to investors, outreaching, 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 outreaching. I just want to let you know, I believe in this. This is what I'm building. This is what I'm creating. And what she said was, I realized in that moment, there was no such thing as a no. Everything should be and not now. Everything. If you ask, if somebody asked you, no, if somebody asked you for money in the street, maybe. But if a normal person who looked like they were not homeless asked you for money in the street, would you say yes? No, you would not, right? But if that same person kept coming around in a different suit, in a different jacket, in a different bag, in a different something every day, there would be a moment that you would say, I don't get it. How come every single day you're out here looking for money? I need to know your story, right? And so that domain expertise that you built gets built because you start making sure that people are aware of what you're strong at. What happened with her? She raised money. I remember I watched her. I actually, before I met her, I had seen her on entrepreneur.com because she was pitching to Jonathan Hung over there. And I was watching her coming up in the pretend elevator that they're supposed to be on for um, like a minute. And they stand in a room. No, no spoiler alert. And anyway, then they wait to come out. But actually, the room is like such thin paper that they can hear what the judges are saying outside. It's really, it's really showbiz. And then so, her valuation was 50 million and the judges were like it's ridiculous it's so high so but by the time she walked out of there jonathan hung threw money at her at a 50 million dollar valuation why because he's like this person has now got 179,000 games being built on this all coming from all these different areas she's got paris hilton and she's got randy zuckerberg and she's got all of these other people in and so her domain expertise had been built through weeks and months and years of applying to the TV shows by making sure she's writing and she's tagging and she's direct um, messaging all of the investors, not just saying, will you invest? Will you invest? Will you invest? Will you invest? She's like, no, we got a hundred games up. We got a thousand games up. We got 5,000 games up. I can keep going. I can keep going. It's okay. And even if you say to me, Brian, for the love of God, where do you think I'm going to find time? to be able to spend all my time doing this. Come on, she's from Pakistan. She can find somebody there for like 500 bucks a month who can be a double of her, right? You don't have to do all this stuff on your own, but you have to do these things. Like if you wanna build relationships with investors, they have to see that you're somebody. And it could be you passing around things yourself. It could be me for LP saying, we are important to the entrepreneurship community. Hey, by the oh, you saw us on the restream. Yeah, that's true. That's part of our domain expertise. There are so many things you can do for domain expertise. You can do ebooks, you can do a TEDx talk, you can speak on a stage, you can pitch at a lot of places, you can make sure that you're in groups having an opinion, you can make sure that you're in your posting on LinkedIn, but really important thought education pieces. You can, I've known founders that have created and arranged not just investor groups, but like groups around their area. Um, one of the best examples is, um, oh my gosh, that young lady who started the, was it Gen VC or something? Um, but she's a kid, right? And she's a kid, but she, she built up this entire group around um, Gen Zers being, I think it's Gen Z VC, uh, about Gen Zers learning about VC. That was like her whole platform. She's like, I'm sick and tired of us being left out of the game. That's not right. How do we make sure that we get put back in the game again? And so 
she like reached out to expert dojo one time it's like hey i'd like to do an event here actually that's not true we reached out to her and said we would like you to do an event over in our place because we knew she was so powerful that if she came over and did an event we would have tons of people and hey presto we had tons of people and, and she was so flaky she would just come in she would do her little talk and then she would leave like she didn't even arrange any of the stuff at the event i'm like why have i been working so hard like really that's all you have to do but it was because all these people loved her and they just all wanted to help her and do these things for her. so build up your domain expertise like you've just gotta 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 it's like a huge part of it i i at the very beginning of expert dojo um and ash i'm watching you in case yeah gen zvc that's right thank you buddy um oh and thank you rick you see rick has actually resorted to texting me now because he knows it's the only way to make it to the thing pitch anything with oren claff yes it is a great book i i, I will i i genuinely i would say it will change your life as an entrepreneur it will make you feel so much better about even just going through this whole journey because he just tells you it's okay to tell people to f off like it's okay it's okay to be in a meeting and while you're in that meeting to realize that actually the person that you're speaking with is not giving you the respect the time the energy or what you deserve like you don't have to be rude to that person i'm very seldom rude but i've been in meetings with people now where literally i'm five or ten minutes into the meeting and i'll say look i can tell this is a very little value to you why don't we just like focus on maybe grabbing a beer the next time you're out and try we try the friendship route because you're late stage uh, private equity investment banker we're early stage working with companies three years time we might be huge for you but today we're useless how about that you know how much people appreciate when you say this to them because they're just worried like how's this poor irish guy gonna take it when i tell him that actually he's totally wasting my time <laughs> and these heartbeats i'll never get back again because of him like how do i phrase that and so when you take it away it's always obvious to a third party you just want to make sure that it's obvious to you as well okay and so yeah Oren claff I, I absolutely adore that book um, and so the first thing is how you present how you put yourself across be strong be there be present be very aware of how you are being seen from the other side and i'll bring you deeper into that because i study a an absolute ton of it i really like it um, and then the other part of it is build your domain expertise and then the final piece is then how you position yourself and by the way when you're actually the one thing i do want to add on to the domain expertise piece is that piece about that lady last friday night i loved speaking with her like i really mean it like i loved speaking with her it was a um a the bitcoin event with oh, crikey i can kind of remember it oh, oh the name of the book is oh ash there you go Ash. i like it uh, as rick pointed out to me it is pitch anything by oren claff it's a great book um but i normally go to 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 networking events and there and i meet a lot of people and people are very nice and everything but most of what you hear is relatively boring because most of what you hear either from me or from them by the way is either for me saying let me tell you about expert dojo and let me let me blah 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 but she didn't do that like her company was working on building off bitcoin and she didn't speak to building she didn't speak to her company at the beginning at all she spoke to a movement that was changing the world and the fact that decentralization was here and that bitcoin and for her it was even wasn't even about all the tribes she didn't believe in building on ethereum she built on believed on bitcoin and so as she went into it and her arms were here and she's like look i need you to imagine like this is what's happening on ethereum but it's got limitations and it requires entirely different things while well, within bitcoin this is where we were and i went away believing that like what's happening right now in bitcoin is really spectacular and i need to spend time digging into it so there's a really really important piece within this domain ex this domain experience piece um in that you have to be interesting to the other person like within the context of what you're talking about so i don't want to talk to people about expert dojos irrs or expert dojos aums or any of those types of stuff i want to talk to people about 
what is happening within the world of venture capital that is interesting and important to them. And if it's a late stage VC, that is a different domain expertise conversation that I'm having with them than if it's an early stage founder trying to raise investment. Right. And I personally will normally ask permission. I sometimes forget, but I will normally ask permission to go into like whatever rampage that I'm going to go into because I want to make sure that they're open to it and they're aligned with it. But even if I don't and I forget, I try really hard to watch like where they are, what they're doing, what's happening with them. Like is something that they're doing spontaneous or is it because they're really feeling that in this particular moment? And then based on that, I do it. Okay, the last piece is the outreach. And that's the piece you got to do. You got no choice of doing. And I still see people really struggling with the outreach. I still see that like when I look at it on a daily basis, even within our founders, and I say, hey, what have you been doing today as far as like engaging with VCs, engaging with angels, engaging with people who are going to put money into your company? Like one of our companies, GeoJam, they just got like another ton of money that came through from a person. It's not a VC. It's not an angel. It's someone who's extremely powerful. But you wouldn't know it from meeting that person on the street. Tonight, I'm going to go down and meet someone that I met through one of our companies um, and is probably one of the wealthiest guys in LA. But guaranteed, you, would, I would never have known this. Youngish guy, maybe early 40s, <laughs> young for me. And he's a Chinese fella, one of the wealthiest guys in LA. Never would have guessed in a million years. So here's the crazy thing when I'm talking about outreaching to investors. Investors are everywhere around you. They're not the ones that are necessarily labeled investors. This is like proper Bruce Willis sixth sense. I see dead people everywhere, right? You see investors everywhere. And so you want to make sure every single place you go to, you're pitching to investors. You go out with your husband or your wife and you're going out for dinner with your two friends, you're pitching with investors. That's what you're doing. As long as you are pre-serious A, every interaction you have with every human being on the planet is pitching to investors. Now, here's where we go back to the first point that I made which is about like, how do you communicate? What are the tools that you're using to communicate? Like if you take out a PowerPoint presentation and you're like, okay, and here's what how you pitch. Yeah, obviously your friends are not going to invite you back out to dinner for. But it's when your friends say to you, hey, what do you do? What are you, what are you doing right now? And you're like, it's not so much what I do. It's like the purpose and the mission that I'm on. And I don't want to bore you guys, but I had like the best week last week. I had the most incredible week because you know that like we're building out funds that are going to help founders be able to build like an incredible future. And you know, like the funds are doing well and we're getting really good returns on the funds. But here was an incredible thing last week. We got really deep in with some companies that showed us a way that we could actually get multiple return points. And we never imagined that before. It just blew our minds and it was in the area of tokenization never saw anything like it but we suddenly saw how actually equity can bring in returns tokenization can, like there's this whole new world that we never saw before it's fascinating you, are you guys doing anything on like the early stage space yourself have you have you been watching this because it's truly incredible and then you look at their eyes right and one of two things happened that entire thing that I just did here took no longer than like a minute to a minute and a half, right? It didn't take long enough. No, I use the word wife because it would be my wife. But like I didn't take long enough for her to be embarrassed as she would normally be, right? I'm just under the three-minute bar that I'm allowed to do that kind of stuff. But it was long enough for me to be able to gauge if the people on the other side of the table's eyes are going to glass over or if they're going to be interested. And normally it won't be both who are interested. Normally it'll be one. But all I need is a glimmer. I just need to see. I need a tell. I need one tell. And if I have one tell, I know I'm going to circle back to that later on. 
I don't have to do it right there, not in that moment, but I'm going to circle back later on. I'm going to make sure that I do it over drinks or I do it over something else. Maybe I'll even drop in there, like one of our companies blasting through. Maybe I'll mention that Matchbook just got a Series A. Maybe I'll mention that like Clash are looking to raise at a really high valuation or like Benjamin did really well. Like maybe I'll do that, but I'll, I'll do it. Remember, our job as CEOs of the company is to make sure that our company has sufficient cash flow so that our current employees and future employees can be secure in their jobs. That's our job, right? It's also to maintain the vision of the company, of course, and it's also to make sure that we hire the right people around us so that the company can evolve and go better in the future. But our principal job is to make sure that we have enough money to get through today. And if it's today that we're on, we're in trouble, okay? So every single person that you're engaging with in every single moment is an investor most people if you're in santa monica or orange county i understand everybody's not in santa monica or orange county um but if you are there's a pretty good chance that one in ten people that you're going to bump into over the age of 35 is going to be able to afford to invest in your company and i think i'm being pretty flexible on those numbers and you know why i say this and why i stick on this quite so much is like um I just see it so often. Like there were moments where I said to Isabel, I don't even know why we bother. Like we we pay for this pitch book subscription. We keep these huge databases of investors. I'm like with investors all the time, on investor both parties or on investors other things. And like these are not things that like given the choice between going out and having a game of tennis or, or doing work stuff, which is really networking, I would love a game, no game of tennis myself. I had the choice, right? Um, and so, but I don't. I go to these things. And I said, Isabel, I sometimes wonder, like, why we bother? Because so many of these great investors are just, hey, my friend Jimmy, you know, has just put in like $300,000. Or, you know, my sister's cousin knew a person who did this. The entrepreneurs, though, who are really good at these are the ones who understand this numbers game. They understand the quality of your communication is paramount. They understand that the domain expertise is paramount. Like I have no shame, like zero shame at all. I I literally spam every single one of my friends in uh, in school. I spam every one of my friends. Like when I go, I'll go back to Ireland and we'll have a couple of drinks back in Ireland. I'll make sure I have their email just so I can spam them when I come back. They are my marks. If I was in a movie then I would be the assassin and they would be my mark. That would be the case. And they may be my best friend, but I believe in what I'm doing. So I don't believe I'm stealing anybody's money. I believe that I'm doing them a favor. And if something goes wrong in the future, then I will take the circumstances. That's okay. That's on me. I'm a big boy. But in the meantime, what I'm not going to do is let my ego be bigger than the needs of the company. And so what I'm saying is, the, the the three of these without you believing in your own product in the ability to get to serious a is 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 um is skills for evil right you don't want to do it you have to believe yourself in the product i believe in our product i believe in the companies that we invest in i believe in in and and the numbers that we have means that that belief is founded right you just want to get to that place yourself if you're a little bit earlier and make sure that you're comfortable there but if you are comfortable there this here is the formula right learn great presentation skill learn great emotional resonance skills sorry and um, build your influence build your domain expertise however you want to do it and make sure that you're outreaching to everybody everywhere every time every day you know it's the crazy it's the it's the, you know who the biggest people who are investing in tokens right now? They're like 18 to 25-year-old kids. Are 18 to 25-year-old kids any more vulnerable than like a 45-year-old or a 55-year-old man in, in, in tokens? I don't think so. I'm just as vulnerable as they are. I'm more vulnerable. They grew up with this crap. I grew up with a dictaphone. What the freaking heck do I know? And a fax. What the freaking hell do I know about this stuff, Right? But who's asking an 18-year-old for money? But maybe we should be. Anyway, that's all I got for you. I, I want those three things. I like on these sessions, what I'm going to start doing now that we're working this stuff out, I'm going to, first of all, we're going to get better 
at, um, at inviting a bunch of folks on. Um, and number two, I want to really open it up for questions so people can come in. But I think on these first sessions, I just want to share a lot of the skills that I've picked up by doing this over the years. And a lot of the stuff is made out to be really complicated. It's not really complicated. It's really simple. Like the communication skills, really simple. There are so many people I watch with investors, and I know that just based on their, their style, their communication, how they are, where they are, how they're sitting, but like all of it, the tone of their voice, everything. I know that like that initial emotional resonance has been lost and they will not get money, even with a good product, even with the good stuff. And it's not even that the investor doesn't want to invest in the good product. It's just that seed and pre-seed is not a purely logical game because there's not enough data to be able to do diligence. We're just guessing with data, right? So because of that, we look at other points as well, other points of reference. And that big point of reference is, do we believe in this person? Do we believe this person? Do we trust this person? Do we believe this person is really good? Do we think that we can work with this person? Do we think this person will have the chops to be able to work with other people? Do we see them building a team? It's not like, do we think they're doing well right now? Because now is not a unicorn. Now is just the indicators to what a unicorn will look like. And that second point of, well, if I'm so great, like if I'm really saying to someone I'm going to build a unicorn, like how do I make them believe me well they won't and they shouldn't they should believe what other people are saying and what the other people are saying is generally seen by what's posted what's out there what's on third parties what's on podcasts what people are saying about the conferences they get invited to all of those things and then the final piece is like how many investors if we know the numbers and we know that like building a funnel is based on numbers well building an investor is based on numbers as well and if the numbers are well I want to have, let's say, 10 investors, right? Let's say you're raising a round of $750,000. Let's say the round is relatively early. You're doing like $20,000, $30,000 a month, maybe $10,000, $20,000 a month. So you know the checks will be relatively small, somewhere between fifty dollars and $100,000. And so you know that with those 10 people, you have to have probably – 50 to 100 meetings, probably, right? It's highly unlikely. And those meetings, you're probably going to have two to three meetings on most of them, right? And that period is going to take like three to nine months over a period of time. So some of those meetings might be like five, six meetings that you're going to have with people. Well, if you're going to have those 100 meetings, well, and most of these are cold outreaches or people you haven't spoken to before. Well, we know what that number is. Like we know that number is like, 50 to 100 to 1. So like 100 meetings, like 1,000, 10,000 outreaches. And 10,000 outreaches might be 1,000 outreaches every single month. I'm not saying that has to be your number. But what I'm saying is like if we were just following what the stats say on just basic cold call sales, that's what the number looks like. We just think it looks different because it looks different on Netflix. But like in the reality of the world, the moment that you accept that, the moment you're like, that's cool. And then if you hit it on a thousand, you know, the only thing that means, it means that your presentation, your, your emotional resonance style was awesome, right? If you hit it on a thousand, it just means that your domain expertise allowed you to be able to reduce down what would normally be like a very long funnel. And, and the same thing goes for like the outreaches that you do. It's like how you do different outreach using Twitter, using different models, other things as well. Okay, I'm going to come back next week and we're going to do, um, and by the way, is there anything anybody wants to touch just before I let you all go? Anything? We're all good? Okay, I love it. Um, okay, perfect. Yeah, great. It seems like everybody's good. Um, so, yeah, take this, start doing it. I, like I would really, one of the things that would give me, it gives me pleasure hoping that people will be able to pick something up that would be valuable to them. But what gives me even more pleasure is if I see folks that actually are doing it in the field and they come back and say, oh my God, this like really worked. So take it out to the field, give it a try, feedback to me, give me some fodder that I can bring back next week. And then I'll come back next week and then I'll bring in something else as well. And I'll build on top of this and on top of it and on top of it until you got something which is really good. And, and Rick, we're going to work this thing out, buddy. We're going to work it out and we're going to get you in. Okay. And, and, and it was good to see you, Bradley. Thank you for keeping me company. I appreciate you, bud. 
it's good to see you again and everybody else we'll see you here next week same time same place <laughs>